So today we're gonna cover section four, so we're skipping over section three. So we're going to day one. Okay, so day one of section four. This will be the last section that will be on the quiz on Thursday. So the quiz on Thursday is gonna cover 2A, 2B, and then 4A. So today we're gonna solve by factoring, and we're also gonna solve by uh, using square roots. So whenever we wanna solve for factoring, we're gonna get all the terms to one side, and you're gonna set your equation equal to zero. Then you're gonna factor the equation, and then after it's factored, you're gonna set each term, and sometimes it'll be a GCF, and then any parentheses equal to zero, and then you're gonna solve. So let's just go ahead and do a bunch of examples. So for the first one, notice it's already set for me. It's set equal to zero. So now I can factor this. This is the difference of two squares. So this will factor into x plus one and x minus one. And then now I set each parenthesis equal to zero. So x plus one equals zero, x minus one equals zero, and now I solve. Subtract, and x equals negative one, add one, and x equals positive one. Now, what you may see when you take a standardized test is that they might show the answer as x equals plus or minus one. But in WebAssign, I think sometimes they're gonna tell you to separate the answers with a comma. Now, coming up, when we start talking about quadratics, this is a quadratic equation. We're going to be graphing these quadratics, and one way to find the x-intercepts would be to factor it. And these are x-intercepts. We could turn these into order pairs. And my graph here, if I were to graph this, would hit the x-axis at positive one and negative one. But this is coming up later on. Um, again, at some point in most every chapter, we do factor. Um, so just be ready for it. Okay, number two. I'm gonna go ahead, it's already set for me, it's equal to zero. So the first thing I need to do is look to see, can I factor out a GCF? Yes, I can. My GCF here is x. So I'm gonna divide both of these by an X. So then now I'm left with three X plus one. And now I set each one of these factors, including the GCF, equal to one, equal to zero. So I take the GCF, set it equal to zero. Take what's in the parentheses, set it equal to zero. Now the first one, my first answer, X equals zero, that one's done but I gotta go ahead and solve this one by subtracting one and then dividing by three. So my two solutions here are negative one third and then also x equals zero. And again, if I were graphing these, these would also be my x-intercepts, but that's coming later. This one. For this one, again, I need to set my equation equal to zero. So what I'm gonna do is subtract x from both sides. And now I'm left with x squared minus x equal to zero. I'm going to factor out a GCF of x. And now I'm left with x times x minus one. Again, set the GCF equal to zero, and what's in the parentheses, add one, and my second solution is X equals positive one. When you look at the exponent, that will tell you how many solutions you're gonna end up with. So notice the highest power here was a, a two, so this is gonna give me two solutions. Um, sometimes it may be the same number if it turns out to be a perfect square trinomial that we're factoring. However, most of the time, you know, it'll be two different numbers. Let's try number four. Again, now I have a trinomial. It's already set equal to zero. So I'm looking for factors of negative eight that when I add them, I get a positive two. 
and those factors are gonna be positive four and negative two. Now, my advice to you is do a quick FOIL and make sure that it does give you that middle term. Um, you know, it doesn't take you that long to quickly check. Really, all you need to do here is outer and inner to make sure that it'll combine to give you the middle term. So now I set each factor, each parenthesis, each binomial equal to zero and solve for x. Subtract four, x equals negative four, add two, x equals positive two. So for here, now this one's a little bit more challenging. Um, you could guess and test, the numbers aren't that bad, but I'm gonna go ahead and factor by grouping. So I'm gonna multiply the two and the negative 15. So that's gonna give me negative 30. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me negative 30, but who add to give me negative one. Now, when that middle term is a one or a negative one, that's a clue that my factors are gonna be consecutive. They're gonna be side by side. So in this particular problem, I'll go ahead and list all of them, but it's actually gonna be five and six, and it'll be positive five, negative six. But let me list. So I know my signs need to be different, and my bigger factor gets the sign of the middle. So one and negative 30, two and negative 15, three and negative 10, and then finally five and negative six. That's gonna be my combination that I need because five times negative six gives me negative 30, and then five plus negative six gives me the negative one. So when I factor by grouping, rewrite the first term, replace the middle with the two, ter the two factors you just found. So I'm, and it doesn't matter the order you put them in. So negative six X plus five X minus 15 equals zero. I'm gonna go ahead and make groups. So I'll make a red group here and I'll make a blue group. So the GCF of my red group is gonna be two X. So I'll divide and I'm left with X minus three. The GCF of my blue group is gonna be five. I'm gonna divide. And now I go ahead and take my two GCFs that I just divided by. That becomes my first binomial. And again, it doesn't matter what order you write these down. And then the one that was in common, the X minus three. Now set each one of these binomials equal to zero. So two X plus five equals zero and X minus three equals zero gonna solve for x on each, subtract five, two x equals negative five, divide by two, and my first solution is x equals negative five over two. Over here, I'm gonna add three, and my next solution is x equals positive three. So I have negative five over two, and you can leave it improper, and then x equals three. You can either guess and test here, or you can factor by grouping. Now, remember, step number one is you need to set it equal to zero. So I need to move the three over. So once I move the three over, now I'm left with two x squared plus nine x plus four. Now I'll go ahead and factor by grouping. So I'm gonna multiply the beginning and the end, and this is gonna give me positive eight. So I'm looking for factors, two numbers, that will multiply to give me eight, but who will add to give me nine. So those factors of eight are gonna be one times eight and two times four, but the one that gives me nine is the one and the eight. So one times eight is eight and one plus eight is nine. So let me go ahead and set up my equation. Rewrite the first term, replace the middle with the two factors you just found. Doesn't matter the order you put them in here. I'll put the one X first and then the eight X. Make your groups. My greatest common factor of my red group is gonna be X. 
2x plus 1 remains. GCF of blue is 4. And that's not showing up very good. Let's do green. So then divide, and you get 2x plus 1. Still equal to 0. Take your two GCFs you just divided by. They become the first binomial. And then take what's in common, the 2x plus 1. And now we'll set each of these equal to 0 and solve for x. So x plus 4 equals 0. 2x plus 1 equals 0. Subtract the 4. My first solution is negative 4. Over here, 2x equals negative 4. I'm sorry, negative 1. And then divide, and it's negative 1 half. So my two solutions are negative 4 and negative 1 half. Number 7. Again, set your equation equal to 0. So I need to subtract the 3x from both sides. 6x squared minus 3x equals 0. I need to factor out a greatest common factor. So I can divide them both by 3x. So then I'm left with 3x and then 2x minus 1. Set each of the factors, including the GCF, equal to 0. 3x equals 0 and 2x minus 1 equals 0. Divide by 3, and x equals 0. Over here, add 1. 2x equals 1. Divide by 2, and x equals 1 half. So your two solutions are x equals 0, and x equals positive half. Again, set it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract the 2x from both sides. I get 8x squared minus 2x equals 0. I need to factor out a GCF. My GCF is going to be 2x. 2x, and then what remains after I divide is 4x minus 1. Again, set each of the factors we just found equal to 0. So 2x equals 0, and then the 4x minus 1 equals 0. Solve for x, divide by 2. First solution is x equals 0. Over here, I'm going to add 1. 4x equals 1. Divide by 4, and x equals 1 fourth. So my two solutions are x equals 0 and x equals 1 fourth. For number six, again, you can either guess and test here. Oops. Okay, number nine. Again, you need to set your equation equal to zero. So I need to move the 6x and the negative nine, both of these terms, to the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and add the 6x and add the nine to the other side. And you can do it in one step or you can do it in two. Always try to keep your x squared term positive. It just makes things easier. All right, so once I move these over to the other side, I'm now with, left with x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 0. I'm now going to look for factors of 9 that will give me 6. But this is actually a perfect square trinomial. So once I factor this, the factors are going to be 3 and 3. So x plus 3 and x plus 3. Set each of the factors equal to 0. And you only need to do it once because you don't need to list the answer twice. So subtract 3 and x equals negative 3. When we go to graph this, even though you have two factors that are the same, what we're going to find is this is going to end up touching the x-axis and bouncing back up. It's not going to cross through it. 
but we're going to see this coming up later on when we graph these quadratics. Number 10. Now, if you recognize that these end terms here are perfect squares, instead of trying to factor by grouping and multiplying and getting 36, it will work. However, if you want to just try to square root the 4x squared, you get 2x. And then if you square root the 9, you get 3. And then if you double that, this is the check for it. If it gives you the middle term, which it does, then you know that this is a perfect square trinomial. And all you have to do is take the square root of 4x squared and the square root of 9. And you use the middle sign, and it's a binomial squared. Now you could do it the traditional way and factor by grouping and multiply four and nine, get 36, factors of 36 that give you 12. It's gonna be six and six. Um, and then you would factor by grouping. Now, again, because it's the same binomial, you can just solve it one time. So two X plus three equals zero, subtract three, two X equals negative three, divide by two, and x equals negative three over two. Now, we already did, I think, a similar problem back with number four, um, but now the signs are different. Um, and number four, the middle term was positive. So you just gotta be careful, take your time, watch your signs. So this one is actually gonna factor into x minus four, and x plus two, because the factors of negative eight, that will give me a negative two, are negative four and positive two. Set each factor equal to zero. Add four. First solution is x equals four, and the second one is x equals negative two. Now, here is where um, I highly recommend that you try to keep your x squared term positive. Now, if you wanna move the three over and then divide everything by a negative one, you can do this. But try to always keep your x squared term positive. So I'm gonna factor out a negative one GCF and then that will switch all the signs. And then now we're gonna look for factors of positive three that give me negative four. And those factors are gonna be x equals negative one and x equals negative three. Now we set each term or each factor equal to zero. Now setting this GCF where there's no variable to solve for, I can show that, but I'm not getting anything out of that. Then I would do the next one, x minus one equals zero, and x minus three equals zero. Add one, x equals one, add three, and x equals positive three. The next one has a fraction. We are going to clear the fraction, um, otherwise trying to factor it with a one eighth is gonna be very challenging. So on number 13, I am gonna multiply all of the terms here by this common denominator. So I'm gonna multiply everything by an eight. So you could either put it next to each thing or just distribute it to each term. So once I distribute it, the first fraction cancels out, the eight will cancel there, and I'm just left with x squared. But then now I have to distribute it to the x and the 16. So negative 8x minus 20, uh, 128, and then one, uh, 8 times 0 is just still 0. Now I'm looking for factors of negative 28, 128, that give me negative 8. And those factors are actually going to be negative 16 and positive 8. And now I'll set each factor equal to zero. So 
So my first solution is positive 16. And my next solution is negative 8. Okay, so the next technique we're going to be using is solving equations by square rooting. So your first step is always to get the square term on one side of the equal sign. Then you're going to square root both sides, and then you're going to put a plus and minus in front of the root. Now, when we did this in geometry and we square rooted to get our answers, we would only generally leave the positive answer because we never wanted a negative segment or a negative angle. Now, once we solve by square rooting, we always have to include both the positive and the negative answer. So let's go ahead and try our first example. So we have x squared equals 15. So your step is to isolate the square term, which it already is, so now all I'm going to do is take and square root both sides of my equation. I'm just going to rewrite it here. So I'm going to square root the left side, square root the right side. When you square root a square, it causes the square and the square root to cancel away. So now I'm left with x is equal to plus and minus the square root of 15. Now, in WebAssign, they're going to also ask you um, for the decimal, okay? So just have a nice, your calculator, your basic calculator is really all you need. You can use your iPad calculator. Um, on the quiz, you will not be using a calculator. You're just going to leave it with the square root symbol. But in tonight's homework, it's going to ask you to give the negative square root 15, and then it's decimal equivalent, and it's going to tell you to round to a specific place. So we're going to round it to do two decimal places. So this is actually negative 3 point. So this will be negative 3.87. And then the positive square root of 15 will just be positive 3.87. So it's going to ask you for both. Number 15. Again, isolate the square term. It's already isolated. We're going to square root both sides of the equation. So now I'm left with x is equal to plus and minus the square root of 48. On the quiz, you're going to leave it in simplest radical form. So we need to break it down. So if I go ahead and start breaking this down, doesn't matter what you start with. There's lots of ways to multiply to get a 48. I'm going to do 16 and 3 because I know that's the largest perfect square that's in there. And it becomes 4 square root of 3. So the first answer would be negative 4 square root 3. And then rounded to three decimal places, negative 6.93. And then positive 4 square root 3 which is approximately equal to positive 6.93. Again, on the quiz, no calculator. You're just going to leave it in simplest radical form. Number 16. So for here, your squared term, even though it's a binomial, is isolated. So what I can do is square root both sides. So 4x plus 1 squared equals 20. I'm going to square root both sides. It causes the square to cancel. So this just comes out 4x plus 1. And then now this is plus and minus the square root of 20. Now, I still need to isolate x. So now what I need to do is you can either at this point go ahead and simplify the square root of 20. So if I factor this, it factors into 4 and 5, so it becomes 2 square root 5. So I have 4x plus 1 equals plus or minus 2 square root 5. Subtract 1. So now I have 4x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus 2 square root 5. Divide by 4. 
and x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus 2 square root 5 over 4. Now, if WebAssign asks you to pull it apart, you can. your first one is going to be negative 1 minus 2 square root 5. So first I'm using the subtraction sign for my first root, and then the second one will be negative 1 plus 2 square root 5 over 4. Now, do not be tempted to simplify this. If you are going to reduce this, you would also need to be able to reduce it with the, set, the, the negative 1 that's there. So in order to simplify with the denominator, it has to be able to go into both terms. Okay, because it doesn't, I'm done. I'm leaving it just like this. Next one is, again, isolate the square term. So we're going to go ahead and add 43 to both sides. And I get x squared equals 43. And now I need to square root both sides. So x is equal to plus and minus the square root of 43. 43 is prime. I can't break it down. There aren't any perfect squares in it. So my two answers are going to be x equals negative the square root of 43, which is approximately equal to negative 6.56, and then positive square root 43, which is positive 6.56. Number 18, again, we need to isolate just the square term. So I need to divide both sides by 9. And now I get x squared equals 4. I'm going to square root both sides. So x is equal to plus and minus 2. So x equals negative 2, x equals positive 2. The next one, again, same thing, isolate the squared term. So I need to divide both sides by 25 first. I end up with x squared equals 37 over 25. I need to square root both sides. And I end up with, and again, you could treat the 37 over 25, as you could square root them separately. So you could do the square root of 37 and then the square root of 25, and this is gonna give you plus and minus the square root of 37, 25 is a perfect square, so it comes out as a five. Number 20, again, I'm gonna square root both sides. Let me go ahead and rewrite the problem here. X minus 5 squared equals 25. Square root both sides. And you end up with X minus 5 is equal to plus and minus 5. 25 is a perfect square. Now, watch what happens here. I need to do two separate problems. So what happens is now I'm going to take this apart. So I'm going to first write an equation with the minus sign, and then I'll make one with the plus sign. And now I solve them. So then add 5, and x equals 0, and then add 5, and x equals 10. So whenever you square root that other side, if it turns out to be a perfect square, you actually need to come up with both integers, okay? You can't just do, over here at this step, x minus five equals plus and minus five. You could go ahead and add it and show it this way, x equals five plus or minus five, but then you gotta turn it into the two problems. You gotta give me the integer answers. Let's try number 21. Again, we're going to square root both sides.
square root this side. It just cancels the square root and the square. So it leaves me behind x plus 9. Now the 24 I can break down 4 times 6. Now I can go all the way here to prime if you like to do that. But 4 is the biggest perfect square there. So I got a pair of 2s. A 2 comes out. No pairs here. Multiply them back. So the square root of 24 is going to be 2 square root 6, and it's plus or minus. I'm going to go ahead and subtract the 9, and I get x is equal to negative 9 plus or minus 2 square root 6. So again, the two solutions, if you want to pull it apart, x equals negative 9 minus 2 square root 6, and then negative 9 plus 2 square root 6. These are the two individual answers if you don't write it with the plus minus. Now for the quiz, I'm okay with you leaving it as the plus minus. Unless that was a perfect square, then I need to see the individual integers. Let's go ahead and do two more examples and we're done. Again, same thing here. We're going to square root both sides. I can square root that side and that side. So the 4x plus 7 comes out. The 44 I can break down to 4 times 11. 4 is the largest perfect square, so 2 square root of 11. And now I need to move the 7 over. 4x equals negative 7 plus or minus 2 square root of 11 divide by 4. And x is equal to negative 7 plus or minus 2 square root of 11 over 4. Do not be tempted to simplify the 2 and the 4 because you cannot simplify the negative 7 and the 4. So again, as two separate answers, x equals negative 7 minus 2 square root 11 divided by 4, and negative 7 plus 2 square root of 11 divided by 4. And then the last one, remember you're always supposed to isolate your square term. Well, we got two square terms here. So what we're going to need to do is FOIL both sides, since I have two. So I'm actually going to write this twice and FOIL it. So then this foils into x squared plus 10x plus 25. And then here, foil this side, and it becomes x squared plus 8x plus 16. Move your like terms together. So I can try to subtract the x squareds. They actually cancel on both sides. And now you're left with 10x plus 25 equals 8x plus 16. Move your variables together. doesn't matter if you move the variables first or the numbers. 2x plus 25 equals 16. Subtract the 25. 2x equals negative 9 divided by 2. And x equals negative 9 over 2. And we're done. And that is it for the notes on section 14A, solving by factoring and square roots.